Qigong and the three internal martial arts of Tai Chi, Xing Yi, and Ba Gua were developed in ancient China as a means of increasing a person's life energy by a combination of movement, relaxing the body, and stilling the mind. More than a hundred million Chinese practice Tai Chi and Qigong in slow motion every day to maintain their youthful health and flexibility right through to old age. Tai Chi and the internal martial arts are also self-defense systems which developed from the fusion of Taoist internal power practices with the best Kung Fu battlefield techniques of 17th century China. Although the internal martial arts have been spreading to the West for a number of years, it's been a slow process. The techniques which give these systems their power and energy are very subtle and complex, and the language barrier between Chinese and Westerners has created numerous misunderstandings and omissions. Bruce Kumar Francis began studying martial arts, natural healing and meditation in 1961. Fluent in Chinese and Japanese, he spent 10 years studying full-time in China, three in Japan, and two years in India. His background is unique in that he has trained to the same depth as the best qualified instructors of his generation in China, and he can communicate naturally and effectively in his native language, English. Between them is possible, so there's no compaction of the vertebrae in the spine. Initially, Mr. Francis was primarily interested in the external martial arts. He began at the age of 12 and by 15 years old had gained a black belt and began teaching karate. Then he earned black belts in judo, jiu-jitsu and aikido, as well as reaching instructor level in five major kung fu styles, Wing Chun, Fujian White Crane, Eight Drunken Immortals and the northern styles of Praying Mantis and Monkey. Eight Drunken Immortals is an internal-external style characterized by reeling, lurching, drunken movements. According to the Chinese, you develop power by becoming drunk on universal divine energy. And this stuff is not rehearsed, folks. <laughs> In Japan, Mr. Francis studied with Aikido's founder, Osensei Ueshiba. Then he began learning the three internal martial arts of Tai Chi, Xingyi, and Ba Gua, with Kenichi Sawai in Japan and with Wang Shujing and Hung Xiang in Taiwan. Mr. Francis found the internal martial arts had all the fighting techniques of the external martial arts and much more, and in addition made the body healthier. External arts develop skin, muscle, bone, reflexes, timing, and if they're very good, a lot of mental discipline. But they're about developing the external body, and as you get older, you can't do it anymore. There are no 70-year-old Olympic winners. There's an age after which you get a radical drop in performance. The internal martial arts don't rely on the muscles at all. There are no punching bags, no push-ups. Instead, all of your power comes from using internal energy. You make the mind fuse with your body, and when your mind thinks something, your body just does it. Jack Lehman, shown here doing karate, gained a third degree black belt in Wado Karate in Tokyo, Japan. Now, in internal martial arts, just to show you, I, when I was younger, I was a, a fairly ranking karate person in Japan. What he's doing, um, I, I don't practice because it's a great strain in the body, but. That kind of stuff, your body tenses, your joints get really stretched out and flexed and kind of, a lot of injuries occur from that. Where you're doing something like, you can see that those, those punches are also coming real fast. But there's no tension, there's also no breaking. In Tai Chi, Xing Yi and Bagua, for example, in Xing Yi, okay, I do a straight Xing Yi punch. There's no, you can see, there's no stopping in it. Karate punch, that kind of thing. A lot of shock, this breaking, starting again, breaking, tensing up from the chest, like a weightlifter making that final. Where, in all the stuff that we do, we do it all at the end by relaxing, by relaxing, not by tensing, not by straining, but by concentrating all of our energy internally and using that for power and strength.
In recent years, Mr. Francis has focused much more on the health and meditation aspects of the internal martial arts rather than self-defense. He became a formal disciple of Grand Master Liu Hongjie of Beijing, China, a master of Taoist meditation, Qigong, and a lineage holder in Xingyi, Bagua, and Wu style Tai Chi. He's seen here at the age of 79 doing Bagua. Liu lived and studied with Wu Jianchuan, the son and best student of the founder of the Wu style. Mr. Francis studied with Liu privately in his home in Beijing seven days a week for three years until Liu's death in December 1986 at the age of 84. If you want to learn internal martial arts in Qigong, you need to find a good teacher. Literally, a few months with a good teacher is worth years with a bad one. So you need to be a bit discriminating. However, even in China, good teachers are few and far between. I've been going back and forth in China since 1968, and the saddest thing for me is seeing martial artists on the level of Picasso or Horowitz die, and the people coming after them aren't even close to their ability. Revolutions, war, famine, communism, political chaos, you name it, all these things have taken their toll in post-war China. The fuel of the internal martial arts is qi, life energy, the vital force. Without it, these arts are simply empty movements. This qi is the basis of acupuncture and all Chinese medicine. Mr. Francis teaches qigong, internal energy development exercises, to enable people to build this energy in their bodies and circulate it efficiently. This energy can be used for health or meditation, for example, or to create internal power for self-defense. Qigong and the internal martial arts can enhance every aspect of a person's life. These arts can improve athletic performance, add power to other martial arts techniques, promote mental clarity and the ability to concentrate, reduce stress, and heal all manner of injuries and illnesses. Therapists find their sensitivity and healing capability increased. The movements of Tai Chi create internal stretching and pressures which cause all of the muscles and internal organs to be used. And if your Tai Chi is of a relatively high class, it makes the spine elongate so that the pressure on your vertebrae is released. That's the pressure why people have to go to chiropractors and doctors for back pain. Tai Chi can also overhaul, strengthen, and calm the nervous system, which makes it a superlative stress management system. I work for um, an environmental and consumer advocacy group uh, based out of Massachusetts. I've done this for about six years, an extremely high stress job I work on the order of 70 to 80 hours per week um, in the kind of, of um, work that takes a tremendous amount out of you. It's kind of burnout work. There are very few people that last for more than, uh, more than a couple of years oftentimes. Because of the work that I've done in the internal martial arts, I've been able to maintain my energy over time um, very consistently uh, so that when I begin to approach burnout or I have problems, I make sure that I revert back to my studies that much more and it, it keeps me going. The internal martial arts, of which Tai Chi is the best known, are all forms of Qigong, practices which increase your internal vitality, the Qi. However, there are many types of Qigong which have nothing at all to do with martial arts. These are derived from Taoist healing and meditation techniques, which are in some ways similar to yoga. Yet, unlike yoga, which uses stretching and breathing techniques, all Taoist Qigong movements are based on softness, relaxation, natural circular movement, and the mind. The aim is to regain the natural body you had as a child, with all the flexibility and joy of life. A baby hasn't learned bad habits. He squats naturally to pick things up. He keeps his chest rounded and doesn't pull in his belly. Mr. Francis has organized the Qigong systems he learned into a systematic and comprehensive program of courses. He teaches these in various parts of the United States and Europe, at weekend seminars, and in more detail at six-day retreats and instructor trainings. His Qigong emphasizes natural breathing and circular motion, avoiding any techniques involving forcing or unnatural movement. The Qigong exercises can be practiced for as little as 15 minutes a day to gain health benefits. This is Dragon and Tiger Qigong, the introductory course. It's a simple seven-movement Buddhist system derived from traditional Chinese medicine. The gentle motions are ideal for any age or fitness level. Easy to learn, 
Dragon and Tiger quickly gives you a recognizable feeling of chi in your body. You learn how to work with the chi in your aura and acupuncture meridian lines, and, as you advance in your practice, to absorb and project chi from your hands. In Dragon and Tiger, you also learn the basics of Taoist standing dissolving qigong, including basic breathing, body alignments, and how to dissolve energy blockages. Knowledge of this dissolving process is a necessary foundation for learning more advanced qigong courses. This is the marriage of heaven and earth, suitable for both beginners and intermediate students. Within this simple one-movement exercise, you learn many internal processes, including how to open and close your joints and body cavities at will by using qi, how to control your nervous system, how to stretch all your muscles, tendons and ligaments, how to develop the micro and macrocosmic circulation of energy, how to use spinal breathing, and how to absorb and emit healing energy from your hands. The internal work can be incorporated into any Tai Chi form. In China, Heaven and Earth Qigong is used for healing back, neck and joint problems. For best results with back and neck problems, the marriage of Heaven and Earth is learned first, followed by this spinal Qigong system, bend the bow and shoot the arrow. This intermediate course teaches you the deepest level of Taoist breathing, where the joints, body cavities, spinal vertebrae, glands and muscles expand or contract with each in or out breath. You learn how to control the energies of the spine and each individual vertebra, which not only has tremendous healing benefits, but also enables you to develop the power projection abilities of Tai Chi in the internal martial arts, known in Chinese as Fa Jing. Opening the energy gates of your body is a beginner's course and includes Taoist standing dissolving, cloud hands, three swings and a unique Taoist spine stretch, all described in the book Opening the Energy Gates of Your Body by Bruce Kumar Francis. You learn how to open the energy centers of your body and bring energy down to the ground. You'll adjust your body alignments to prevent qi from being blocked or dissipated. Energy Gates Qigong strengthens and energizes the internal organs and spine, loosening up your back, neck, shoulders and knees. You learn how to internally connect the different parts of your body into one coordinated unit. Spiraling Energy Body is an advanced course which uses the same physical movements learned in opening the Energy Gates Qigong. You learn how to bring the Earth's energy up your body and move energy in spirals, as well as how to project Qi to any place in the body at will, completing the process begun in opening the energy gates. Spiraling energy body also includes how to neutralize the negative psychic energy of other people. Students each receive an individualized standing Qigong posture, which enables them to generate energy and open up energy channels in their body that they would normally never have access to. Each posture is used for healing specific problems people have or to open up specific channels where energy is blocked, thereby preventing illnesses before it has a chance to begin. Although the people here may all seem to be doing similar movements, the internal detail is individualized for their specific needs. It's very much where you don't judge a book by its cover. God's Playing in the Clouds is the culmination of the Qigong program Mr. Francis teaches and the bridge between Qigong and Taoist meditation. This advanced course contains all the internal components of the previous courses and is one of the oldest and most powerful Taoist rejuvenation methods. You learn how to energize the brain, strengthen the bones, cleanse the emotional body of negative energy and release spiritual blockages. Some of these exercises can be done while driving a car or sitting at a desk so that you can deal with back strain or stress while it's happening rather than having to fix a much bigger problem at the end of the day. I'm Jan Sultan and I've been uh, rolfing for 20 years and uh, since I've been working with this Qigong uh, I find I'm getting better results with less output of energy on my part. Really exciting. Uh, I'm able to use the principles that Kumar's teaching immediately in my work and I've had some great personal health benefits too less pain more flexibility
The internal martial arts have three distinct yet interrelated levels. They are comprehensive programs to achieve lifelong health, sophisticated and subtle systems of self-defense, and finally, at the most advanced stage, meditation practices. Here Mr. Francis shows how Tai Chi would be practiced differently for fighting as opposed to health or meditation. To do Tai Chi's meditation, the mind has to stop and have no thoughts whatsoever. And then you start, you start actually doing alchemy on the body. So I'm doing it for fighting. Yeah, that's for fighting. Can you all see the attitude? It's very much, you know, it's like, a, like a cat playing with a mouse. Doing it for your health. You want, you want lungs? I'll do it like lungs. You can see you're actually affecting the energy of the lungs, okay? Now, I'll do it as meditation. It just take me a second, because you can take a second to get into it. That's all right. When you're doing Tai Chi's meditation, you get lost. You lose all sense of anything occurring except that you're just where you are. There are many reasons to practice Tai Chi. Your health, your mind, your meditation, or fighting. I don't say one is better than the other. Health, meditation, and fighting are the three things of it. The, some people say, oh, Tai Chi's no good for for health. Fighting is a terrible thing. And people who are fighters say, oh, meditations. Who cares about health? Chinese phrase is an interesting one. What would you prefer to lose? Your eyes, your ears, or your throat so you can talk? Which one would you like to lose? Which one is more important? Would you rather be deaf, blind, or dumb? Okay? So all three must be in there now. Tai Chi produces a high degree of relaxation, balance, and physical coordination. In China today, you can see practitioners in their 60s, 70s, or even 80s displaying a flexibility you'd rarely see in a 30-year-old Westerner. Tai Chi's gentle, non-jarring movements can be practiced by anyone, young and old, athletes or people whose health problems prevent them from doing strenuous exercise. Tai Chi tones the muscles while releasing knots and tension in them. During each workout, Tai Chi exercises every single muscle, ligament, tendon and joint of the body and the movements cause every lymph node and internal organ to be massaged and all the body's internal pumps to be energized. China's national sports teams include Tai Chi in their training to heal and reduce injuries and to improve reflexes. The thing that you have to remember about Tai Chi about Qigong, about Taoism, about internal martial arts, about any of the Taoist arts, is that you must never do too much. You must never do too little, and you must never do too much. So primary rule in this, what I've talked to all you about, is a 70% rule. Anything you do physically, for example, if this is my stance, I can go here, then my stance is only 70% that long. It's only 70%. If my arm can stretch out this far, 
You'll see that's it. It's a fairly decent stretch. I only do it 70% that far. So I'm always gathering energy so that if I go all the way to my extremity, if I get all the way out here, I have to maintain energy just not to fall apart. The stress cycle. It's keeping yourself on the edge of all that stress. What you want to do is anything, how long you practice, how much energy you use, what you do. You only want to go 70% as far as you can, so there's always a 30% reserve of energy. If you have this 30% reserve of energy, what happens is that the energy in your system is working at 100% and you're increasing your energy. But when you do something physically as far as you can go, you've got to use 30 or 40% of your energy to literally just hold you together. If you can learn this, half the stress in your life will disappear. In China, they call it the golden mean. Americans, Europeans, we do too much. And we hate ourselves because we, we weren't perfect enough. We hate ourselves because we didn't struggle hard enough. And in the end, what it ends up doing is we end up destroying ourselves. So the idea of Tai Chi is to be at your maximum possibility of what you can do, but be relaxed and comfortable within it. Because it's only from that relaxed and comfortable state that you can have long time staying power and high efficiency. Tai Chi relaxes and regulates the central nervous system, releasing physical and emotional stress and promoting mental and emotional well being. Energy travels in the body in spirals. If, for example, let's say right now, Don, Don had a bad back for a long time. But now, where is your back bad? Is it bad up here? His back is bad here, okay? It could be high, middle, low. Now, I'll show you how I would adjust this posture so that this turning would specifically be good for his back. So stand wherever you need to stand. Just make sure you have the don't block the camera. So Don turns around, now watch. At this stage of the game, what he would do would be to drop his elbow so that he would feel direct pressure around his kidney area because since this injury is around here in his back, it's the kidney energy that's actually going to be feeding it the most. So his elbows would actually sink down in this so that he would get a direct pressure in the back of his kidneys. And then as he started to come out of it, okay, as he starts to come into the motion, his turning would want to literally, through the twisting of his muscles, would want to go right through this part of his back and open it up. Do you understand? Because he could do it, for example, okay, do it again, it could be over here. He could do it and go like this, punch up high up like this, mm -hmm. which if he did it that way, and he started the pressure here, this would affect this part of his spine. But it wouldn't hit the bottom or the middle part of his spine. But let's say a person had a heart problem. What you want to be able to do is to get this general pressure on the actual heart muscle like this. Open, opening and closing, not by moving heart, but actually internally to get the internal pressure of your body to gently massage it, which will strengthen, which will put chi in, which will also cause the blood movement. So I'll just show you. Or, for example, some of you do the yang. Can you all see the opening inside them? I don't know how well you, know, how well you can see the movement around you. Okay? <coughs> see the, back. the heart is closing. See, very gently closing. And then, see, the whole body's rounding. But in that rounding, pressure is created in the, in the heart. Any movement, it wouldn't matter what the movement was. So. Closing, close to the heart, opens the pressure of the muscles around the heart. In Qigong, as well as Tai Chi, we learn very carefully how to align the legs so that pressure comes from your spine through the floor into the floor. Now for most people, what ends up happening is that because like their knees out a bit, well if this goes on for a long time, if you can see what I'm doing to his knee, it's like throwing an arm lock on a person, it'll hurt their joints. People walking like this down on their knees, down on their knees, this will cause, by having a knee too far out or too far in, that's almost like having someone put a leg lock on them. Well, with thousands of steps, that causes a lot of damage. You want to make sure you avoid that. When you take a step, if your feet do not actually absorb what's on the floor, you get coming up your body. Well, this happens hundreds and thousands of times, and the next thing you know, you got because all this shock ends up in your spine. It ends up in your back. 
So these alignments of how the knees are kept with the legs, the alignments of how the hip moves so that pressure moves not into the joints of your body, but equally through your body. Besides serving as a health maintenance system, Tai Chi and Qigong can also heal. Doctors in China regularly prescribe Tai Chi and Qigong as therapy for high blood pressure, heart problems, poor circulation, asthma, impotence, nervous diseases, arthritis and back, neck and joint problems. These arts have a remarkable ability to clear up chronic health problems which sufferers have been unable to cure by any other means. A year and a half ago, I was um, diagnosed with a thing called ankylosing spondylitis, and, uh, which is basically my, the, my lower back is um, fusing. And, uh, and it's been happening for a number of years. Like for the last 10 years, I've been in a lot of pain a lot of discomfort walking, and um, oh, it's also been causing a lot of emotional stress too. Um, last year, I've been studying qigong and tai chi, and uh, I found great relief. Um, I no longer have to do uh, anal analgesics to uh, control the pain, and uh, my freedom of movements much greater, much better. And uh, my emotional stability is a lot better as a result of uh, less pain and uh, much more comfort comfortable uh, movement. I was like a dead battery and, um, and I couldn't watch television and I couldn't read, I just couldn't do anything and I was like that for a long time, just really flat, and flat on my back in bed. And I was diagnosed as having Epstein-Barr and so yeah, uh huh. And I was very depressed, and um, that went on for a couple of months. And then I had a housemate, and he said, "Oh, you've got to come to Qigong." And I said, "You know, I can't come to Qigong. I can't even move. I can't get out of bed." But anyway, he dragged me, and so I sort of was propped upright for a while. And and I did it, and I had to sit down in the early classes. I had to sit for a lot of the time, but in about three or four weeks it started to kind of take hold and I started to get a little teeny fraction of energy and then it kept building and building and, and then by the end of the first class there were times I felt as though I could lift a building it was like <laughs> really getting good. Well, my name is David Fine and I'm a Parkinson's patient. I've been uh, studying Tai Chi and Qigong with Kumar for about a year. Uh, it's offered me quite a bit of relief uh, some of the symptoms of Parkinson's are a tremor, a loss of balance, loss of memory, uh, drooling, stumbling, things like that. It's really helped a lot. You know, my balance is not a problem anymore at all. Uh, I can make a fist with my right hand, which I never used to be able to do. Uh, my handwriting is pretty good. I've still got the disease but I think that I actually have a chance of getting over it. Uh, but I can say for a fact that I'm better than I was a year ago, and that is not supposed to happen. As the post-war baby boom generation reaches maturity, we're coming into a very bad situation. The percentage of the population that is elderly is going to relentlessly increase. The medical system right now is basically falling apart, and costs are beginning to skyrocket. Within a number of years, individuals who are not incredibly rich may not be able to afford medical care. Therefore, if a person wants to have a healthy and full old age, they're now going to have to begin to take responsibility for the health they're going to have when they get older. Tai Chi and Qigong are very viable ways of having this responsibility and fulfilling it so that your old age is one of comfort and happiness and joy and not one of being terrified of illness. In the late 1980s, Mr. Francis taught the health aspects of Tai Chi for a year at New Mexico State Penitentiary in Santa Fe as a public service. The prison has a rough reputation. Some years ago there was a serious riot and prisoners killed more than 30 of their fellow inmates. But I found that Tai Chi had amazing results in the people in my class most of whom had life sentences. It calmed them down and alleviated their chronic health problems. It's like the story of Androcles and the lion. 
When the thorn was taken out of the lion's paw, the lion stopped eating people at random. December 1987 is when we started. And at that time, my blood pressure averaged 150 to 170 over 110 to 125. That's with medication. Okay, right now, it averages 120 over 90. Actually, uh, everybody in this core group here are not the same, same people they were when we started. Uh, everybody is much happier, much friendlier, jokes more. No one has threatened killing anybody in six, seven months, you know, so uh, that works pretty good. I'm, I just wish I'd have found this when I was like 18 or 20 years old, you know. I don't believe, I believe it would have made a difference between me coming to prison or not. You know, it's, it's done that much for me, you know. I love it. One to the side. There are three main styles of traditional Tai Chi, the Chan, the Yang, and the Wu. Mr. Francis will be demonstrating the same first five movements of Tai Chi for all of these, ward off, roll back, press, push, and single whip, known in Chinese as Peng, Lu, Ji, An, and Dan Bien. The original and most physically difficult style to learn is the Chen, which is what you're seeing now. In the Chen style, as in all Tai Chi, the body must move as a unit, with all parts connected and moving fluidly together in spirals. In Tai Chi, you have Chan Su Jing, the spiraling action of the body, which is like the uncoiling of twisted silk. In Xingyi and Bagua, this is called Luo Su Jing, which means to twist like a high-speed drill. This takes the energy from the center of the body and spirals it through the arms and the legs. You can get extreme power and energy from this. The fingers that can move, that can twist, that can curl. The palm that can twist, that can curl. The wrist that can twist and can curl. The elbow which can twist and can curl. The shoulder which can twist and can curl. The shoulder blade which can twist, which can curl. Okay? The uh, shoulder blade, the spine, which can twist, which can curl, the hip, which can twist, which can curl, okay? Knees, the thighs, which can twist, which can curl, the knees, the ankles, the toes, the toes, all we have done. The best known of the three traditional styles of Tai Chi is the Yang, which developed from the Chan. Here, Mr. Francis demonstrates the old Yang style, derived from Yang Chen Fu's father and uncle, which predates most of the Yang style seen in the USA and Europe. Bruce Kumar Francis studied Yang and Chen style Tai Chi for 15 years. He studied the Chen style with Feng Zhi Chang in Beijing, and his Yang style teachers include Titi Liang, Lin Du Ying, and Yang Chen Fu's eldest son, Yang Xia Zhong. My name is Jim Evans, and I've been practicing martial arts for about 18 years, and I've been lucky enough to have uh, really pretty good teachers. Um, Chinese martial arts I practiced in San Francisco for about six years, and Kumar is really quite exceptional as, in my experience with teachers and what he knows, and also more even what he's able to get across to me. Because I had a real good Chinese teacher in San Francisco, and I think I was good, but I didn't learn nearly as much as I learned in the first 10 weeks with Kumar about how the energy works and how to apply it to martial uses, as well as to health. Mr. Francis teaches intermediate and advanced level Yang style Tai Chi, including Qi work, body mechanics, push hands, and self-defense techniques. He also offers seminars and retreats on how any Tai Chi form can be practiced as meditation. The Wu style evolved from the Yang. Its movements are tighter, smaller, and more compact than the other two styles of Tai Chi. It has the most movement internally. There are also many lesser known Tai Chi styles, some of which are combinations. Mr. Francis studied the Chen Pan Ling Tai Chi Xing Yi Bagua combination style with Wang Xu Jing, Hung Yi Xiang, and others in Taiwan. All the Tai Chi styles I studied were all more or less equally effective for self-defense. 
However, I personally found from my experience of doing Tai Chi since the mid-1960s that the Wu style is the most effective for health, meditation, and stress release. Mr. Francis learned Wu style Tai Chi from Liu Hongjie in Beijing, who lived and studied with Wu Jianchuan, the co-founder of the Wu style. With Liu's encouragement, Mr. Francis developed the 16-move Wu style Tai Chi short form. It's ideal for beginners of all ages and fitness levels. The sequence requires little space and takes only about four minutes to perform. Yet it includes the Wu style's most essential healing, power, and spiritual aspects. Various instructors in the United States and Europe teach this short form. When practiced at fighting speed, the three internal martial arts of Tai Chi, Xing Yi, and Bagua are some of China's most effective and advanced methods of combat. They rely on internal energy for power rather than muscular development or tension. Movement is smooth and continuous, without jolts and breaks. Unlike the majority of other fighting systems, the internal martial arts can be begun by people in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and even possibly 60s to attain genuine competence in self-defense without damaging their bodies. Yeah, Tai Chi, you can pick up at the in your latter in the latter part of your life. A lot of the other Yang styles、um, arts are really strictly limited for for use. Well, I'm thinking of karate. I'm thinking of taekwondo. I'm thinking of、uh, anything with a yang, anything with a you know,、uh, whether it be kickboxing, for example, or Thai boxing. These are pretty tough things on the body. You know, when you absorb blow after blow, it's it's very similar to to、um, contact sports. You know, those people suffer years afterwards. So, Tai Chi is a healer. A lot of the times, martial arts are very destructive of the body. Bagua is the rarest and most beautiful looking of the internal martial arts, not to mention the most rigorous and the hardest to learn. It was first taught a century ago by Dong Hai Chuan, who would only say he learned it from a Taoist hermit in the mountains. Bagua has many unusual movements. Derived from the I Ching, Book of Changes, the basic practice method is walking in a circle, and then one begins very fast, multi-directional changes. Bagua's motions involve a tremendous amount of turning in the joints, which has to be developed by having already done something like Xing Yi, Tai Chi, Kung Fu, dance, or yoga. Bagua uses both hard, known as Yang, and soft, known as Yin, internal energy. Here, Mr. Francis is demonstrating Yang Bagua methods. Bagua is a superlatively effective martial art, as well as a comprehensive health system. Here, Mr. Francis demonstrates Bagua at the first U.S. Tai Chi tournament held in Winchester, Virginia, in July 1988. He was a judge at the tournament. His opponent here is Sam Massich, who was the overall first place champion at the contest. Everything was completely spontaneous, as they had never met before the championship. <laughs> Bagua is difficult, but it's very aerobic. It's also tremendous flexibility. <laughs> hands and the hands, the elbow joints, shoulders, the waist, the knees, the hips. Building all these things up. Mr. Francis is now demonstrating Yin Bagua methods. Bagua's twisting and joint articulation techniques allow the arms and legs to move comfortably and freely. The practitioner can move in any direction smoothly and without strain. Bagua's multi-directional circling and spiraling fist techniques are virtually unique in martial arts.
Bagua is an art with the skill of a warrior, the beauty and grace of a professional dancer, and the inner calm and still mind of a meditator become one in action. Shimi is the oldest of the three internal martial arts, created 800 years ago by the famous Sung Dynasty general Yuefei, who never lost a battle. Shimi has no wasted moves. Every motion is practiced exactly as it would be used in combat. It's the most young of the internal martial arts, and its whole idea is my will be done. If somebody attacks me, I just do what I want to do to them. I don't care what they do. There's no noise, no grimacing, no faces. You just do it. The hands get really loose and flexible in Xing Yi, and yet as heavy as a house. The Xing Yi for women, I feel, is a is the basic, best self-defense I've ever learned. It's the shortest, most to the point, and most effective. Hong Chen, go. In many martial arts, you have to stand back and get some distance to build up the power of your blow. Xing Yi, Tai Chi, and Bagua enable the practitioner to deliver power from just half an inch away from the opponent, or even at the point of body contact. Go. Yeah. Notice what Xing Yi does? It just like closes the person up, and it doesn't retreat. Go ahead. It goes forward. Xing Yi is the fastest of the three internal martial arts to learn for internal energy and self-defense. Its straight line, attack-oriented motions make it an ideal bridge from the external to the internal martial arts. Xing Yi doesn't have pushy hands, but has what's called rosho, where you practice gaining sensitivity with your hands and the ability to use your waist. So you're you're watching. Mike is going to try and hit me. Okay. You see how my hand came back? You're learning how to use your hips. He's attacking. If I'm doing something in Bagua John, just ching ching, ching ching, smooth. If he's doing something in Tai Chi. Okay, I'm just kind of like taking his energy and throwing it back at him. Okay, if he's doing something like something in Shin. You can even see the bottom hand. Oh. I'm just going to go right in and attack him. The vast majority of people practicing Tai Chi, particularly beginners, are doing it for health rather than fighting. One bridge between Tai Chi practiced in slow motion for health and doing it faster and with more skill in a combat situation is the safe practice of Tai Chi pushing hands. The first stage in push hands is to be able to center and root your energy. And reach a level where your opponent's energy and power never touches you. Then you learn to direct their energy wherever you want it to go, like a matador controls a bull with a cape. It's an art of playing with both your own and your partner's energy, and of building internal power. Beginning with simple fixed sensitivity exercises, pushing hands evolves into free exchanges. Usually, there's very little movement involved, although there are some techniques where you do move a lot. The object of pushing hands. Is to uproot your opponent by moving him or her backwards, downwards, or up in the air without being pushed or losing balance oneself. Mr. Francis has trained both national and international push hands champions. You can generate power for a push from various parts of your body, such as the spine or the legs, and pushes may be done using one or both hands. Or, for example, you can push directly from the hip. Or from the shoulder. Here, Mr. Francis is using one hand and pushing from the back leg. Pushing from the front leg. Using both legs to push. Using both legs to pull up. And pushing from the belly. For those in the healing arts, energy is there in your hands, or it is not. And Tai Chi pushing hands teaches you how to get it there. Tai Chi's ability to make your hands sensitive to another person's energy and to shoot energy into them has no equivalent in Western practices. If you train how to move energy, you can get an exact understanding of how it works—not random, not guessing, 
but a structure upon which to work the Taoists have been using for thousands of years successfully. This is something very valuable that Tai Chi has to offer the West. During his ten years in China, Mr. Francis worked in clinics and hospitals as a doctor in Qigong and Chinese therapeutic bodywork, known as Tui Na. transmitting qi through his hands as well as through the use of sound. There you go. Yeah, as you go up higher, I can, I can feel it more. There you go, Peter. Just breathe right here. Yeah, you're moving it now. Can you feel? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's not like a hit on the head with a hammer, but I do feel it. And before we found dead, right? Yeah. About four years ago, I got a, um, a pretty severe uh, spinal damage. And um, I had tried a bunch of different therapies, a lot of them having to do with uh, exercise movement, things like that. And it wasn't until I started working with Kumar, uh, started learning how to move the energy in my body that I really made great progress. And uh, it really made the difference for me between being in a wheelchair and walking. Um, just learning how to control the internal energy, especially down my legs where it was really lacking. Okay, now Peter, right where my hand is. As you breathe in, I want you really to breathe right into this spot. Breathe all the energy you can into this spot. That's right. Okay? Now breathe in directly into your spine. Breathe all the way into your spine, into this spot. Now when you breathe out, okay, push this vertebrae backwards. Move it. Physically or just with the Physical. breath? Above. What? Put your hand on my back. Okay? So let's say, find a vertebrae. Just anyone. It won't okay. matter which one you do, okay? All right. Now just watch. Oh, yeah. For the moment? Yeah. Okay, next thing. Should you bring it in? Get the movement there? Yeah. And you actually move the vertebrae with your breath. Okay. Okay. I think I've done that lying down against the floor. But yeah, I want you to try sitting up because you don't lie down your whole life. You actually have to sit and you have to sit and you have to walk around. <laughs> oh, it's a lot more time lying down in bed. We want to get you out of that state. Okay. <laughs> okay. You've done enough of that in your life as it is. For a lot of people, for example, who do meditation or people who sit... Uh, do, will do all sorts of meditative and energy work. If their spines get blocked up, what happens is that after a while they can't do their meditations properly. Their body literally will not hold up, it will fall apart. Then you also have a problem with people who have had poor posture their whole life, who have lived uh, really lousy lifestyles and have had very bad things happen to their back. And their vertebrae and their whole spine gets clogged up. And these are ways of very practically being able to do it. And what Peter's doing sitting in a chair, all this stuff is applicable to people doing any office job anywhere. And keeping your spine in good shape as you're working is a much better idea than having to just try and fix it at the end of the day. Two months in, you got to... Currently, rather than being a hands-on therapist, Mr. Francis focuses on teaching therapeutic Qigong for self-healing yeah. and for those involved in healing others. Learning the Qigong program is recommended before studying Tui Na to develop enough Qi to be able to use the Tui Na techniques effectively for healing. What you deal with in Tui Na and what you do in Qigong, if there's an energy between every joint in the body. Right. This joint, two joints, and this, well, here, for example. Here, here's his wrist. There's an energy that's actually between his wrists that allows this, these joints to open and close. It is in muscles. You can just, like, watch my hand. You know, show it, Mike. Show it. The thing is a lot easier. It would, would allow the hand just to open and close. Open and close. And this energy that's in between your joints is chi. It's, it's actual energy. It's not to do with your tissue. It's what makes your tissue work. It's, this, it's the power that actually causes your tissue to be able to do things. So most Western therapies are working at the level of the tissue of the body. Twena and Qigong Twena are working at the level not only of the tissue, but of the energy that causes the tissue to transform and to function in certain ways. Well, I've been working as a rolfer for a number of years, and I'm wondering how learning toy now would help me in the work that I do. First of all, one of the main problems that all body workers have is that the work they do on people doesn't hold. Right. Toy now has a lot of things about teaching you how to use chi, how to actually use energy in the system to make your work hold, uh -huh. how to make your work three, four, five times as effective. Second thing is that, is that uh, toy now and qigong toy now 
can teach you many techniques that you didn't have that you will find will make your work less boring and will get you a lot better results than what you're getting right now, but which will not take away from what you're doing, will add to what you're doing and make it much more effective. The human body has energy. Body workers of all kind who work with energy get what's called burnout. Because they take other human beings' energy into their system and they put their own energy out to another person's body and they don't really know what they're doing. They have no systematic, rational way of doing it. So what happens? It's all kind of, they get a result, they don't get a result, but then they burn out. Twena has developed for the past three or 4,000 years ways to specifically prevent you from getting burnt out. It has ways to specifically teach you, if you are getting your energy drained, how to build your energy back up so you're not damaged. And it also has ways of teaching you how to use somebody else's energy to, to take it into you and out of you in a circle where it doesn't actually touch you. Right. A bit like you have a, a big sloth outside and stuff goes around you but it doesn't actually go into you where you get hurt. Now what occurs in rolfing or for example in chiropractic or osteopathy right. yeah. where they do cracks in your bones, they took your tissue apart, what they do is that they stretch the tissue, they stretch it. The same way like you'd, you know, like you'd stretch your arm or you'd stretch your leg. So that then what they do is, see this, this, this disc is pressing out or some problem in your spine? They pull through the tissue. They pull it apart like I'm doing it right now. They actually pull it apart so your leg, just like a leg stretch. The problem is that if you don't stretch your legs, after you've stretched your legs and you don't do it for two months, they start going back down again. So you get a problem here of it again squeezing on the disc. A person does something, a year later it goes back. What's happening in 29 is you actually take the energy that's between the vertebrae of the spine, as an example, and the energy lines, and from the inside, this way, you cause it from the inside of the vertebrae, you cause the vertebrae to go apart. And you put that natural energetic reflex back into the body which a person had as a baby, but which they've lost due to damage. Tai Chi and Qigong are extremely effective meditation systems. These arts enable one to still the mind and balance the inner being. They emphasize not straining nor overdoing. One learns to harmonize with one's environment and dissolve inner conflicts. Make sure your spine is straight, comfortable. All of your body is relaxed, very easy. And now begin to let all of the energy in your body dissolve down your body till it finishes in your belly. All thoughts, all body feelings, all emotions, whatever happens, let it happen. Let everything drop down to your belly. And this is all, this is the first stage. In time, we're going to start teaching all of you how to dissolve literally the whole entire content of your mind. Until nothing else is there except what you started with originally, long before anybody bothered to condition you. Traditional Taoist meditation originates from the I Ching, Book of Changes. It includes both the water and the fire methods. The water method was passed down from the sage Lao Tzu and was taught to Bruce Francis by lineage master Liu Hongjie. Mr. Francis has been practicing this water method of Taoist meditation since 1969, before which time he was principally involved with Zen. He has also studied Tibetan and Kundalini meditation practices. Taoist meditation can be done while moving, sitting, lying down, or during sex. The first stage of Taoist meditation is to clear the mind of negative emotional and mental energies while simultaneously opening up the chi of the body. The second stage is the complete stilling of the mind. The third stage is internal alchemy. By studying Qigong or any of the internal martial arts, people can have more energy in their life, heal old injuries, improve their general health and state of mind, and enhance their performance at work, whatever that work may be. Those already involved in martial arts will find that internal techniques will deepen their understanding of techniques already learned and give them more power and sensitivity. Whether you're a martial artist, athlete, natural healer, or just someone who wants to have more control over your health and state of mind, this is a rare opportunity to change and improve your life. From stillness springs activity, and from activity springs stillness. Qigong and the internal martial arts allow the mind to be totally quiet, yet the body active. 
So that, for instance, the mind is completely calm and still in the middle of a combat situation, or the body can be totally quiet while the mind is engaged in mentally demanding work. In this modern age of stress and rapid change, this ability isn't to be sneezed at. Tai Chi isn't something that gives you a quick hit, but something that goes on for years and years right through to old age. In the West, people are slightly confused. They think they are the things that they own. They think they're their good looks, their fancy car, their really, you know, snazzy clothes, the money they have. The fact of the matter is that you came into this world naked and you're going to leave this world naked. And it's that which is inside of you, not what's outside of you. That's what the internal martial arts are really about. Like no other Westerner, Bruce Kumar Francis has devoted his life to the study of China's ancient internal energy technologies. He specialized in the development of qi, internal energy, which is the secret of the formidable healing and self-defense powers of the internal martial arts. He is able to demystify qi development in a way that is understandable and accessible to the average person in plain English. It's his hope that Tai Chi, Qigong and Taoist meditation can bring the West a future of health, strength and well-being. <laughs>